Let's rank all of the top robot vacuums from 2025 inside of a tier list to see which one is going to be S class, A class, B class, C class, and ultimately D class, the worst of the worst. Because as you can see here, there's a lot of various robot vacuums out on the market. There's these roller track mop pads like on the Mova Z60, the Narwhal Flow, as well as the Dreamy Aqua 10. So there has been a lot of robot vacuums and we've reviewed over 40 robot vacuums in 2025 alone. So let's just do our tier list and see which one is going to be the best for your money. So if I'm going through the iRobot and just to give you what would be a S-Class iRobot, I would give the iRobot S9 S-Class status there because when it came out, it was truly revolutionary. It was the most powerful robot vacuum you can get and it was great for carpets and hard floors. So that was particularly nice in terms of the current generation. So if you're asking me on the iRobot rankings today, the 105, which is our entry model robot vacuum, we're gonna give that a D-class rating. And that's particularly because it is gonna be based on the older technology that these robot vacuums used to be based on just four or five years ago. So there's nothing modern about it. And I think for the price you're paying, you're overpaying. The iRobot 405 and 505, I return both of them. And I would give those as well C-class where they're gonna be more usable, but they're not gonna be very good. And even for the price you pay for them, they're still very expensive for their cleaning capability. Ranking all of these robot vacuums, let's start with the Dreamy X50 Ultra. I would give this a B tier, and that's because even though it came with 20,000 pascal of suction, I remember when they first announced that it would be able to go over thresholds up to two inches, and I was excited about it. But that actually negatively impacted its overall performance on carpets because it didn't sit as low as it should. And at the same time, I didn't think the pathing and the navigation was up to par. So we're going to give that a B rating. But that's not just where the story ends. Dreamy also released their L50 Ultra. And that L50 Ultra was just a variation, a reskin variation of the Dreamy X50 Ultra. Next is the Mova P10 Pro Ultra as well as the Mova P10 Ultra. The non-pro edition is coming with 8,300 Pascal of suction and the pro model that you see here is coming with 13,000 Pascal of suction. And in our ranking, the Mova P10 Pro Ultra and the Dreamy L40 Ultra are gonna be A tier. And that's because for the price you're paying $400, you're gonna be getting the basically the Dreamy X40 reskinned, slightly redesigned. And then when you even when you compare it to uh, the Dreamy X50, there's not a huge difference in terms of the clean stations amongst all of these models. And that shows that the Dreamy and the Movas from the flagship to the value models are all going to have very similar clean stations. So I'm going to get too focused on the clean station capabilities, but where the biggest differences lie is that you want to look at the full capabilities of these robot vacuums. And for $400 now, you really get a lot for your money. Ranking the Dyson 360 Visnav, I'm going to give this a C ranking because it is one of the worst robot vacuums in recent memory. And that's because it is just too big. It doesn't do anything particularly well. Even with all of the updates, the navigation is not on par with the other versions that utilize LiDAR, as well as their front facing cameras better. And you can see inside of the price of the Dyson where it's dropped from $1,200 to now $300. And shout out to all of the robot vacuums that I am not including inside of my list because I do not have enough time to cover them all. So this is going to be on the Eureka J15 Pro Ultra. It is very powerful, 16,000 Pascal of suction, and it's going to be very affordable with all of the same features you see on the flagship models. Where it differs is that it's not going to have the best overall pathing. It's not going to be the best at any particular thing, but it is going to be pretty good at just about everything and you're getting it at a low price. Where I find you see the biggest differences is going to be in the build quality. And there is risk when you're selecting a robot vacuum, especially if you're doing it just based on price. 
The Eufy C10 is a perfect example because this is a D tier. This is our lowest tier here. And it is because even though it has 4,000 Pascal of suction and it is quite narrow, the Eufy C10 is very flimsy. It doesn't have enough suction power to pick up a lot of the debris on your floor, as well as it suffers from battery issues. So when you compare it to a comparable model from let's say Shark, which is gonna have a similar design to the Eufy with those rear facing panels where it's gonna empty itself, it's not gonna be the same. The Eufy is just built a little bit cheaper. The plastic is gonna be a little bit thinner. And in my Eufy, I have two Eufy C10s that broke on me. So it's hard for me to recommend them to you today. And this is gonna be the Eufy S1. And it's a solid robot vacuum, but because of how crowded this premium robot vacuum space is, it's gonna be a C tier robot vacuum. Because for similar price, you can find ones with better build quality. You can also find ones with more suction power, with more features that are gonna be heavier, that are gonna do a better job cleaning after itself, as well as just look a little bit more expensive because you are paying good money for this style of robot vacuum. Next, this is the Roborock Seros Z70 with the mechanical arm. It's going to be one of the most advanced robot vacuums and it's going to be B tier. It's not going to be A and S because it's really one of the first of its kind with that Omnigrip mechanical arm. You do pay for that because it doesn't have as much space for a motor or large battery. So it does suffer in other aspects. But we gave it a B tier because there is no other robot vacuum that does what it does with that mechanical arm like it does it. Sticking to this premium space, this is the Narwhal Flow. It's going to be one of the best, if not the best, mopping robot vacuum I have ever used with that track mop. And it's going to have an A score. It comes with 18,000 Pascal of suction. Narwhal is going to be more of a indie robot vacuum manufacturer but it does a great job picking everything up. It has the capabilities of cleaning its mop pads at that clean station better than any other robot vacuum. The only real drawback is it really goes through water fast and it's not gonna have the same advanced mapping as the Roborocks and the Dreamies. Next is the Roborock Q-Revo S5V. It is gonna be the most conservative choice out of the bunch here because it has the most conservative features. It doesn't come with the most suction power, but it comes with 12,000 Pascal suction, which is just about the same as these guys here, except for the X50. Where the Roborock makes its biggest differences is gonna be in its AI obstacle recognition system. So it comes with something called reactive tech, and that's based on LiDAR as well as structured light. The reason why the S5V has an A score and not an S score is going to be that even though it's a very good vacuum, it does have a problem. One of those problems is that if you turn it around, it's coming with a stationary static side brush. So this is not going to be extending outward. So that limits its overall reach. I'm going to rank the Roborock Curve X as a B here. And that's not because it's not a very good robot vacuum. It's because it still has an issue with some cords. And the Roborock Curve X came with some upgrades inside of its clean station where it's going to be a little bit hotter on the inside. But overall, the Roborock Curve X, where they made the biggest improvements, is going to be inside of the navigation. It recognizes more objects and they increase the overall suction power but it still gives it a B score, and that's because Roborock has so many other great robot vacuums. The Roborock Q-Revo 35A, we're gonna give that a A-class ranking. The price you're paying, you're getting a very capable robot vacuum. And it might not come with as many features as what you get from the Dreamy lineup, but what it does do is that it is gonna be that kind of reliable workhorse that is able to vacuum your floors as well as do a good job mopping them. This is the MOVA Z60 Ultra and giving it a rank, it is going to be A class or A tier. And it is a very good robot vacuum with features like a roller mop pad that's easy to clean, 28,000 Pascal of suction, that retractable LiDAR we see on the X50 Ultra, but it's gonna even outperform what we are already seeing on the Dreamy Aqua 10 that it's based on. So this is the Dreamy Aqua 10. It's gonna have that roller mop pad. And it's gonna pick up this egg yolk. 
but the MOVA is going to detect that egg yolk, see it better, and call it a large stain, probably an egg yolk. That is something that the Dreamy cannot do. And the MOVA is going to make accurate decisions and make them faster with all of the same mopping features as the Dreamy Aqua 10 and do it at a lower price. This is the Dreamy Aqua 10 and it's going to be a B tier or a B class robot vacuum, at least in my rankings. And that's because even though it's powerful, it's going to be an upgraded souped up version technically of the MOVA Z60 Ultra. The MOVA Z60 Ultra came after the Aqua 10. So it has new features that the Aqua 10 does not come with. And the Aqua 10 does come with this NVIDIA chip and it's been really hyped up, but it just hurts its performance because it has a hard time making decisions. And then it goes back on its decisions and then it confuses itself. But as a robot vacuum, any other year, it would be one of the best robot vacuums, if not the best revolutionary robot vacuum. But because so many robot vacuums are so good, this is now at the price it's being offered. A if you had me ranking the Sharks, the Shark vacuum. AI Ultra, the Matrix, this $250 robot vacuum would be a B-class robot vacuum. And that's because it's going to be particularly loud. It's not going to be the most classy, but it's easy to use. And if you just wanted to clean a particular place on your floor, you just place it down and you press the button and it's going to do a three by three square. So very simple, but it's definitely not going to be the best looking and the build quality is not going to be the highest. And if you also talk about the Shark AI Vac Mop, that's also going to be C-Class because in terms of today's technology, it is much more dated than before. And finally, our last robot vacuum in our rankings is going to be the Roborock Q7 M5 as well as the Q10. And these are going to be S-Tier, our top tier, our only robot vacuum that gets that S-Tier today. And it's because of the value. Because for the low price of what you might have paid for a iRobot 675 or entry model iRobot just two, three years ago, now suddenly you are getting a robot vacuum that's going to be able to empty itself, that comes with the same LiDAR and the mapping and a similar vacuum performance to the $1,000 robot vacuum, but you're only paying 20% of the price. It is really where the rubber is meeting the road everything else that you're looking for is coming down to marketing and your needs how much time is it going to save you one of the biggest differences that might not be explained well between a premium robo vacuum and one of the mid-range robo vacs is that on the top end they are using bigger batteries so if i get a dreamy x50 or a z60 from mova or a Roborock Seros 10R, they're all using about 6,400 milliampere hour batteries. While these guys on the mid-range are gonna be using 5,400. So it's about a 9% decrease in overall battery size. But you're not gonna really feel it that much in terms of overall battery life because they still are able to be used or have sessions that go up to 200 minutes each. And if you're talking about clean stations, Dreamy has not really changed the design of their clean station in four to five years. So the Dreamy X20, X30, X40, and X50, as well as the L40, L50, and the MOVA P10, they all use pretty much the same type of clean station. And having that external detergent tank that you can fill up and your clean station regulates how much detergent it's using is a huge benefit. I can tell you that this will actually save and conserve how much water you're using. So you're talking about going through detergent very quickly if you don't have something like this. Also, it's inconvenient. So the Roborox, they do not come with that. For these, if you want to add detergent, you have to add it into the clean water tank that you see here. You don't add it into some type of external bin. My robot vacuum tier list really exposed the hidden truth about robot vacuums. Price matters, but not as much as you think, because the Dyson is C-class. The Eufy S1, as well as the iRobot, some of them are D-class. And they're one of the, or some of the most expensive robot vacuums you can get. While I have the cheapest robot vacuums in my S-class, because they do just about the same job as those D-class robot vacuums. 
the most interesting place that we are at is in terms of mopping and self-cleaning stations because as these everything just gets better and better it is that these self-empty stations are getting hotter or blowing warmer air it is that your robot vacuums they're trying to put legs on them so they can go upstairs so we're really at that precipice where how much better can these robot vacuums get there's links in the description or in the window if you're interested in purchasing any of these robot vacuums and showing your support. And I'll catch you next time. This is David with The French Glow. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment box below. And please hit that like and subscribe button. I really do love your all your support. And I appreciate you. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, bye, bye.